are back at the Williamsburg Lodge. We just got up. We are actually inside. We've ordered our breakfast at Traditions, which is the um, morning breakfast place um, in the hotel. And so we are headed out today to explore the town of Colonial Williamsburg. We have some plans for the day. We're going to go hear Thomas Jefferson speak. We are going to take a carriage ride and then we're going to explore all the shops and the different um, buildings that are open along the main um, town, the main Glouch, Glouch, Gloucester Street. We're going to check out Gloucester Street and all the buildings that are um, open there today and see what we can find. So come along with us today as we explore day one of Colonial Williamsburg. Of course, make sure you hit like and subscribe and follow along with the entire Williamsburg series. Hit that notification bell and all the rest of our videos on this channel and we will get going. Something else you should know is that you need tickets. You can stay at the hotels and the official Colonial Williamsburg hotels will, and some of them will include tickets, but you do need tickets to actually walk through these, um, this town and go into any of the stores and buildings. You can walk through it for free, but you need to sh always wear these lanyards or have access to a digital ticket on your phone. So everybody down here walks around with their tickets around their neck. Oh, there, there, there. <laughs> Hello. So behind the gardens of the governor's palace is this little stage amphitheater area. And we're going to wait for Thomas Jefferson to come talk to us. Uh, well, uh, good, good morning. Uh, how are you faring? Yeah. You have no complaints? It's early. You must not be Virginian. Uh, you know, I confess, uh, most of the time, uh, men wish to uh, speak of policy and law and government theory and philosophy with me, which is fine, well, and good. But I thought perhaps um, um, being somewhat tired of such a subject, and as uh, I'm the one who's amplified, I could talk about something else. How does that sound? Yes. I'm going to do it whether you agree or not. Um, and William Randolph and my father, Peter Jefferson, made an agreement that whoever survives the deceased between the two of them will care for the deceased's children. William Randolph lost his wife and then his own life, and those children became orphans. And my father, instead of removing those children who had lost everything, removing them from their home, he chose to move we Jeffersons to them. So we left Shadwell and we moved to Tuckahoe Plantation. Franklin says he sat next to Jefferson for two days from July 2 to July 4. Franklin says he sat next to Jefferson for two days and watched him squirm. And at one point I grew angry and walked out. I left. I went shopping. <laughs> Shopping therapy was a thing in the 18th century as well. <laughs> I walked out of the back of the Congress. You know, we five who created that document, Sherman, Livingston, Adams, Franklin, myself, we were sitting in the back. We'd already done our debating. We'd altered the document as we best saw fit. Now it's Congress's job to alter the document. So we sat. And when Congress removed that anti-slavery clause that I had in my declaration, an anti-slavery clause. The longest paragraph in the entire long train of abuses was against slavery. And when Congress removed that, I left. Maybe that's why I say that they mangled it and emasculated it. So did I write 100% of it? Yes. Does only 70% remain? Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember Adams said, or uh, Franklin, remember what he said? I will never again suffer my work to the scrutiny of a committee. I should have listened to him. Mm -hmm. Friends, that's all the time we have, but what a delightful, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has really been um, a delight for me. Mm -hmm. Before you leave, uh, I want to say, uh, a few things. Uh, it's a very short ending. It's a 16 part ending. <laughs> uh, part number one. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for being advocates of education. I want to thank you for being advocates of history. I say that history is the most important subject that man might study. 
period. I thought that would get you a lot. You're here after all. Uh, history is important precisely so that we can learn from it. Yes? yes? History does not care about us. We should care about it. Especially in this new government where we're turning the government over to the people. Wouldn't it be nice if we could learn from the mistakes made generations prior so that we need not repeat those same mistakes in our own? Yes. Yes. Well, you applaud. I'm getting ready to charge you. My charge is uh, to continue to read history. And when you see it being repeated, that's a dark time for you, I know. Trust me. Oh, trust me, I know. <laughs> Sometimes it's often said that uh, uh, those of us who read history are doomed to watch others repeat it. <laughs> but when you see this happening, you have an opportunity, a chance to educate and encourage others to adhere to history. Every answer to the present and the future can be found in the past. So when you're uncertain of what to do in your time, of where to go, of what has been done before, come back here and we will recharge you. We will be your northern star. We will decloud the waters that have been far muddied far too long by newsmen printing falsehood as fact, because here in Williamsburg, we talk primary source researched fact 365 days a year. And I think that is something our country could use a bit more of. So come back, bring your friends, bring your kids, bring your grandkids, bring your neighbor's kids. Tell your neighbors first. Until we meet again, I am ever your humble and most obedient servant, Thomas Jefferson. Yay. <laughs> Step in, do you want a portrait? Yeah. Absolutely. My birthday's on July 2nd. Your birthday's on July 2nd? Our nation's birthday. Did you know that before today? That was new news to you? We knew it yeah. like a week ago. <laughs> a week ago? Oh, good. We told him. No yeah. All right, look at Grandma. I have a video, so they have a picture. Very good time with Mr. Thomas Jefferson. That's a good way to start the trip. What'd you think? Pretty cool. That's fun. It's a fun actor. Entertaining. I like the uh, give and take from the crowd as opposed to being spoken to. That's fun. Yeah. It's way better. All right, that was a good way to start the day. Get us in the mood for all this uh, revolutionary time period, 18th century stuff. Um, we are headed next to ride a carriage. Our carriage ride was $65 and that's what it cost for at our hotel. I think that's a little bit of a discount. They leave every 20 minutes or so um, from the, the main road, Duke of Gloucester Street, that's hard to say. Um, and so that's what we're headed to do now. I see a carriage. Good thing we bought them in advance because it says that they're sold out for the day. So note that you should do it in advance. But look, the John Green house, it's like the store, like the general store has. That's where you pick up your carriage.
Well, that was fun. We got to tour around. Another good way to start your trip. Just um, take a tour of everything. You get to see a little bit of everything. You get a lay of the land. And then it's um, then you can decide where you want to go after that. So we just finished our carriage ride. I'm not sure where we're headed next. We're going to walk through some shops. We're going to just kind of check everything out. Um, so let's see what we can see. Let's go. Hi, horses. Sergeant. Sergeant. Maya. Maya. Sergeant. Give her a scratchy scratch. Let's check out the store. John Greenhow store. Oh, we have drinks. We have pottery. We have souvenir shirts. Drinks. Beer. Pewter and stoneware all the classic stuff that was made here or of the era and some coffee hmm. syrup and preserves cookbook Redware pottery, earthenware pottery that they would use. Interesting. Oh, soap and candles. It's like a colonial bath and body works. We the people. Should definitely get an ornament. That's what we try to do on all trips. We have a lot of choices. Games, we have this. We've been gifted that from my parents coming. Oh, soaps, lavender. Cooking utensils. There are lots of different buildings, but they're not all open every day. So you'll see these flags out, these colonial flags, and that means this building is open. So as you walk up and down the street, you look for the flags, you know the building is open, you can go in, check out a map, and they have, um, they have the schedule. But if you're not sure, look for the flags. This is like a textile space. We are the weaving, spinning, and dyeing shop. These are all different jobs that would have been done by different people in the 18th century. But we're trying to do as much of it as we can here so we can show you folks the process specifically for when I decide that I want to be independent. Before the war, most of my fabric, about 95% of it, is made in England and then shipped across the ocean. And there's a good reason for it. England makes fabric better faster and cheaper than I make fabric here in America. And as we get closer and closer to the war, we start seeing more and more fabric made here. Not to save money, not to be self-sufficient, but as a form of protest. And once you've gotten that loom up and running, the actual weaving side of things is really easy. All I have to do is press on these pedals by my feet. Half my yarns are up, half of them are down, and I've made a gap, an opening in between my two layers called the shed. That allows me to take a shuttle full of yarn, throw it, catch it, lay down one loose piece of string, and then using my beater bar, that reed we talked about earlier, I press that into place and we can make, everybody ready? Yeah. One thirty-sixth of an inch of new fabric. Woo! We are at, I think, what's called Chowning's Tavern. The actual inside place is not open, but there is a restaurant in the back called Garden Fair, and it's like just an outdoor, it's like barbecue. Um, open air type of place to eat so that's what we're gonna do for some lunch today the garden fair menu hamburger hot dog grilled chicken veggie sandwich garden salad kids meal here's how your beef is made <laughs> 